I think one thing that we've all learned in the past 48 hours is that in football, this really is an unpredictable game. A few days ago, we were all casting our thoughts collectively on Frank Lampard and whether Lampard had it in himself to turn our fortunes round. By getting that result against Luton Town, could that kickstart fortunes new? And I guess you guys, we've got our answer. Lampard has left, we'll never now know whether he had it in himself to turn things round. And in the space of no time, in comes a new manager in Thomas Tuchel. And with Thomas Tuchel, now comes new ideas, now comes new tactics, new formations, new lineups. The reality is, everything again now becomes reset. Now, we have about five games in the space of 14 days, and Thomas Tuchel really is getting straight into the thick of the action. In today's match preview, of course, there won't be any press conference review. Ideally, when Tuchel has his first words and makes his first statement, I'm going to create a separate video detailing that. But in today's match preview, I'm going to break down the possible lineups we may see in Thomas Tuchel's first game in charge. And to end things, I'm going to have on a very special guest in Talking Wolves, who's going to help me go through the opposition analysis so we can learn more about our opponents and whether Tuchel can get his first win as our new manager. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Now, before I continue on, I want to say a massive shout out to BT Sport for sponsoring Blue Lines TV. BT Sport is broadcasting every Premier League game twice in the next 10 days, including Chelsea vs Wolves tomorrow night at 6pm. That's a Wednesday, 27th of January, so you guys don't forget that. With BT Sports Monthly Pass, Chelsea fans will be able to catch five Blues games and everything else on BT Sport for the next 30 days for the price of £25 with no additional contracts. These five games include Chelsea vs Wolves, our games vs Burnley, vs Southampton vs Spurs and of course our UCL game against Atletico Madrid. If you guys are interested there is going to be a link in the description below. Sign up to it, BT Sport have Chelsea fans covered for the next 30 days. So now you guys, before I start with the predicted lineup and the opposition analysis, I want to give some brief thoughts on Tuchel in an intro section first before continuing on. Now the reality is, is that this is Tuchel's first game and due to the nature in which he's come to the club, there really is no time for him to really instill any belief from the team. So, in my perspective, I'm assuming that this game is going to be one where Tuchel's going to use it to make some observations of regards to players he could work with, players that he could improve, players that he could take forward to the next level, and the players that could fit the tactical ideas that would suit him at this club. Now, the irony may be that the result in tomorrow's game may not necessarily matter based on the context of Tuchel's appointment. However, as I stressed before, this is a reset period and in reset periods, this is a massive opportunity for every single player to fight for their sport, to win a place back in the team and to impress the new manager. So now we take things forward to the predicted lineup. Who is Thomas Tuchel gonna pick? I mean, honestly, who even knows at this point in time? I'm gonna make my best guesstimations and by doing this, I'm going to pick three potential lineups that Thomas Tuchel may use in tomorrow's game. Now with Tuchel, he bases his tactics and principles in regards to the set of players that he has to work with and, and due to reasons like this, I won't be using things like a 5-3-2 because Thomas Tuchel has used a variety of different formations over the years and honestly, if I wanted to guess to every single one, this would be over one hour. So I'm going to stick with three formations. They are going to be the 4-3-3, 4-2-2-2, and a 3-4-3 as well. Now, starting with the first lineup, I've gone for a 3-4-3, and in this lineup, I've gone for Werner up front alongside Havertz and Ziyech. In midfield, I've gone for Jorginho and Mason Mount. The wing backs, I've gone for Reese James, Ben Chilwell, and in defense, I've gone for Silva, Zuma, Rudiger, with Mendy and goal. Based on the fact that Tuchel's influence might not be as strong in his first game, and for the sake of backline consistency, it makes sense to remain with the same goalkeeper. Tuchel may think it's best for the team to drop its lines a bit more instead of maybe progressing the play from midfield, playing out wide instead, playing quick and direct to your Havertz's, your Werner's who potentially could play off each other. With Hakim Ziyech continuing in his free role, this could be an interesting lineup to see and we saw Tuchel use a 3-4-3 at Paris and Germain where he had Cavani, Mbappe, Neymar and, and he really found creative ways to get the best out of an attacking lineup. He could use something similar in tomorrow's game based on the fact that 
with our new attacking signings, they do need more time getting used to pressing from the front. And due to the fact that they might not be consistently great at that, it might make sense to improve the defence behind them to potentially minimise some of the attacking players' defensive responsibility. Now for the second lineup, I've gone for a 4-3-3. Up front, I've gone for Pulisic, Werner and Hakim Ziyech. In midfield, I've gone for Mason Mount. I've gone for Jorginho and I've gone for Kova. And for the back line, I've gone for Ben Chilwell, Reese James, Thiago Silva, Rudiger, with Mendy in goal as well. Now, considering the news that Billy Gilmore could be leaving on loan before the window ends, it does seem like Tuchel has come here to get the best out of some of the existing players already with the squad. And the only times that Corvo and Jorginho play to their best is when they're playing together. I've gone for Rudiger in the back based on the fact that Tuchel was interested in bringing Rudiger to Paris Saint-Germain before the window ended and due to that German connection too, this could be an easier way for him to acclimatise to the team Really good knowledge of the Premier League too, and Tuchel might be thinking that he wants different things to come from his centre back duo by potentially leaving Kurt Zuma out. Now, based on Havertz's past form and of course getting back to full speed, I've left them out of this 4 3 3 because Tuchel might have an interesting use for him because Tuchel might have his own interesting way of using Havertz coming off from the bench. So that's how I see it being for a 4 3 3. And to end things with the final lineup, I've gone for a 4 2 2 2. Up front, I've gone for Werner alongside Kai Havertz. You know, Tuchel might be thinking he likes how they play off each other. And every time we've seen Havertz, you know, score a lot of goals, is when he has that link up and focal point playing alongside him. So I could definitely see a Werner and Kai working alongside each other. Alongside them, I've gone for Hakim Ziyech and Hudson Adoy, based on the fact that he wants some playmaking ability, based on the fact that ideally in a system like this, and based on how Tuchel's used it back at Paris Saint Germain. He wants playmakers to be in those wide areas and in midfield it gets interesting. Originally I had Kovacic and Jorginho but I think maybe Mount and Jorginho might be the base in that midfield. So in defence is Ben, Rhys, Rudiger and Thiago Silva too based on the fact that Turkles works alongside him and you know for the first game against Wolves it makes sense to stick with what you know followed by Mendy and goals. So it does feel like these are just some guesstimations and as the season progresses, as Tuchel has more time to work with the squad and as we see him manage more games, our learning and understanding is going to grow even more. And there you guys, that was my predicted lineup segment on Thomas Tuchel and what he might do for the game tomorrow. Now, we end things with another banger. I'm going to be joined by a special guest in Talking Wolves where we're going to break down and discuss the opposition. Talking Wolves, how are you doing today, man? I think the first question that I do want to ask you is, who is one player from Wolves that us Chelsea fans have to watch out for? Um, I think it's got to be Pedro Neto. He's really uh, he's done well this season. Um, obviously, with the absence of Jimenez earlier on this season, uh, he's had to step up quite a lot. Uh, came into the club last year, was a little bit raw, had a couple of sort of well, consistency issues, I'd say. But this season, he's really kicked on. Um, really dangerous winger, obviously, has scored the winner against you guys earlier on in the season. It's really quick and difficult to, to defend against. And I think... Uh, some big clubs are going to be looking at him come summer. I think we, we, I wouldn't be surprised to see some big clubs that are interested in him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really dangerous player. I mean, he really impressed me when you guys beat us not too long ago. Yeah. And yeah, he's been a standout in this Premier League season. So now to ask you, what is one strength that Wolves possess followed by your negative? What, what do you feel like we could do to be able to like get the advantage against you guys? Ooh, interesting. Well, Wolves... Under Nuno, we've normally been quite good defensively. I would have said that that would have been one of our strengths, but our lack of clean sheets is, is alarming, really, in recent uh, in recent times. I think we probably sort of. I think we're going to change setup for this game against Chelsea. I think we are going to go back to our back five formation, which is hopefully going to you know set, get us a bit more uh, yeah. sound defensively. I think it'll be difficult for Chelsea to break us down. Um, but I think over the last number of times we've played Chelsea, we've played quite deep. We've made it difficult for you guys, uh, especially earlier this season. And I think under Sarri as well, uh, it was a similar sort of tale. Lampard got the better of us twice last season quite comfortably. But I think Nuno will really want to try and shore up our defensive options this time round. Um, but our wing backs are a little bit shaky at the moment. I think that's where Chelsea can take advantage down those wings. Eight Nori, who's a left wing back, young. 
talented yeah. but still very inexperienced. I think the same with Nelson Semedo. He's coming from Barcelona, but he's just so inconsistent at the moment. We just don't know when he's going to turn up. So I think down the right and left-hand side for Chelsea, it's where you could cause us some problems. That is very interesting to hear. Let's hope that potentially Tuchel has a, a system and, and pattern of play ready to be able to expose you guys. And of course, Wolves, you know, we know that you guys are great defensively. But with the addition now of William Jose, are you expecting him to feature in the game tomorrow? I don't think he'll play against Chelsea. I think it's just a little bit too soon. I think they still haven't got all the paperwork and stuff sorted yet. And I don't actually think he's in England just yet, actually, at the time of recording. So, yeah, he may be at the game, but I don't think he'll be in the squad. So I think he'll be one for Wolves, uh, maybe when we play Palace on Saturday. And how excited do you feel about this acquisition? Because William Jose is kind of seen as like, a, as like a Diego Costa type of striker. Do you feel that he could be a worthy addition to Wolves? Yeah, we, I mean, we've needed all season an experienced striker. You could argue we needed the striker even when Jimenez was fit, really, just to give him a bit of competition or a bit of backup. And we've just struggled ever since. We relied massively on Fabio Silva, who's sort of only 18, 19, and just had no experience at the top level. Uh, I think Wolves signed him to sort of bed him in slowly, and he's just been chucked in at the deep end. So, yeah, this is massive for Wolves, and, and we hope that he can hit the ground running as soon as he can. Yeah, exactly. I think what's also quite interesting too is that quite a lot of new signings made this season that have come from abroad have kind of struggled to adapt in particular yeah. with this season. So maybe that could be an example of just how difficult COVID's made things for clubs and for players and when it comes to integration. But okay, for the final two questions, of course, you know, being a Wolves fan, there's no way that you're not feeling confident about getting something in tomorrow's game. Yeah. <laughs> how do you feel that you could affect us? What is one key strength that Wolves possess? I think it's our counter-attacking. Um, again, you guys would have seen yeah. that in that game <laughs> earlier in the season. Uh, I think that goal uh, at the end, the winner for Neto, just sort of shows that perfectly, really. Yeah. Um, and even the game I always remember is it was a 1-1 draw at Stamford Bridge, where, like when I said like Sarri was in charge. But I remember watching that game and thinking we defended so deep, it was ridiculous. And then we had one chance, which we got you on the counter-attack and we scored. I think Hazard saved you in the end right at the death. But I think our counter-attacking is one of our real strengths. And I think if you had Dharma Traore is on it and Pedro Neto on the opposite wing, hopefully we could cause Chelsea some issues. Yeah, of course. With Wolves, they're a team that you have to respect. You know, you've got the balance of defensive solidity, you know, individual players that can produce moments by themselves too. And for the final thoughts and observations, your form has been a bit inconsistent. When yeah. do you feel things can turn around? And do you think maybe the game tomorrow could be the perfect opportunity to do so? I'd probably say the last time we played against Chelsea was our best performance um, of the season. We haven't put, basically we haven't performed better uh, than that since that game. So I'm hoping this could be the game to help us turn the season back around. The form has been dreadful, uh, but like I said, just defensively we've been too leaky, and hopefully this change back to a back five system could strengthen us defensively. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. It, it'll be interesting with Chelsea. They're going to get that new manager effect where you know raises the morale and they just everyone ups their game. Or are we still going to sort of take advantage of, you know, the the life after Lampard, basically? So, uh, yeah, it could go either way tomorrow evening. It'll be interesting. OK, OK. That sounds uh, very interesting. And before we wrap things up, man, what is your match prediction for the game tomorrow? Oh, I, I always go over 2-1 Wolves wins. Uh, I'll back my own team and go over 2-1 Wolves. <laughs> Okay, cool. I think, as you were saying, the new manager coming in, you know, new managers tend to bring good form immediately. I'm going to be going for a 2-0 win. I'm hoping maybe two can, can get us a clean sheet. And, of course, Talking Wolves, man, thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. You guys, you've you got too, the man. inside scoop on Wolves and what to expect them from tomorrow. And of course, you guys, on that note, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.